Good day everyone and welcome to Steve's Kitchen. Today I want to talk to you about capturing audio when you're traveling. And uh, we've recently gone over to the Wireless Go, the Rode Wireless Go, but I've also got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus here. And I'll explain to you when you might want to use that. And I have here the Rode Video Micro. They're both sort of boom mics, but they have some different features. We used to use the Rode Filmmaker kit, but I've recently decided to go over to the uh, Wireless Go. And I'll get this, this is a brand new one, so let me open it up and we'll talk to you about why we changed over. So I'll get those little tabs, seal the box. So the old Filmmaker mics were excellent, but they were a little bit bulky. This is the Wireless Go. Now I've worked with them before, so I know the kit. And I just think they're, just tear that open. I just think they're such a good wireless lav mic system. All you have are two little units, a receiver and a transmitter. The beauty of this wireless system is with the transmitter unit here, uh, you can actually just sort of clip it onto the talent, clip it onto a shirt but it's a little bit bulky. I mean this, as you can see, if you, if you clip this on here, it can be a, a little bit heavy. There are ways of making it a bit more discreet. You can clip it on the inside. And uh, I often prefer just to clip it onto your belt or pocket and use a lav mic like this one. It's a bit more discreet. These microphones work very well. We'll be seeing that in a moment. They also come with two dead cats, um, but you can actually clip the little, the little dead cat onto the top. So if you're outdoors and there's a lot of wind, this will kill almost any wind at all and you'll get perfectly uh, crisp, clean sound. There's a, a few cables that come in the box. The most important one is the jack that will actually connect you to your, your camera. So in the receiver unit, there is a little place here you plug the jack in, and this one goes to your mic in on your DSLR camera or whatever camera you're using. Now out of the box, I'm sure this will have some power in it, so I'm just gonna turn it on. And there's your display. I think you have to pair these two devices. I have a, another wireless go, and you need to sync them up so that the receiver matches with the transmitter. So why would you use this solution, for example, over the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, or perhaps even the Video Micro? Well, I think the obvious thing is it does capture really good sound, and you're actually listening to me now on a wireless go. So this is the sort of sound that you'll be getting nice and clear in a room like this. If you've got the lavalier mic on or you're using it directly, just clipped onto the talent, you get lovely, clear uh, sound. I think it's a cardioid uh, type sound receiver, so it pretty much picks the sound up around the talent and a little bit of external sound as well, but not too much. So it's really good at sort of picking out uh, the spoken word. One of the most important things for me when I'm making videos and I'm traveling uh, is that we have a plus or minus gain setting. The Wireless Go has that. It has a little button on the top here and you can go, it's, it's not giving you the exact figures, but it, if you press it once, twice, three times, there's a, there's a little volume display there that shows you whether you're on high gain or low gain. And that might not seem important, but it really is because different cameras have different preamps in them that sort of, work really well with some microphones and not with others. So adjusting the gain on the unit, the receiver unit like this is essential to be able to use. For example, sometimes when I use this little Sony FDR-X3000, it's really hot. If you plug anything into it, it has a great little microphone jack on the back here, but everything is too hot. So we have to drop the decibels down to the lowest point to be able to use it. So a camera like this will also work with the Video Mic Pro Plus because this also has plus and minus decibel settings. 
The Rode Video Micro does not have that facility. So I cannot use this microphone, for example, with this little camera. Some of the Sony cameras have that issue. I think there are a few others. I can't really tell you. You'll have to do your own research on that. This little fella is fantastic if you're using it outside and you want to get really crisp sound and you're using a phone, for example. It's ideal for phone use. It captures great sound. If there's lots of wind, you're still gonna get really crisp sound. But I wouldn't use this one with a big DSLR or any camera where the preamps are a little bit too hot. This microphone is one of my favorite Rode microphones. This is the VideoMic Pro and it has settings on the back that you can play with and adjust uh, to up and down the gain and get it perfect to work with your camera. One of the disadvantages with this camera is if the subject who is speaking is too far away, this is a shotgun mic so it will point at the subject but if they're too far away, it won't pick up the sound clearly and there may be other noises, uh, outside noises that will affect the quality of the sound you are receiving. Another problem with this sort of microphone, if there's a lot of noise behind the talent, this microphone is directional, so it will pick up those noises and it can sometimes ruin a shot. Now, if you're doing something that's only maybe a meter, meter and a half away from the talent, and you've got the microphone pointing at them, you are gonna get really beautiful, crisp sound. So with a DSLR, with the Video Micro Plus, that's a big word, I, hate, I keep having to say that over and over again, I hope I'm getting it right. With this on top of your camera, you can film great sort of like cooking scenes. If you're, if you're filming someone cooking and you're fairly close, this will, this will just pick up really great quality sound. The problem is, is when your subject is further away from the camera, then this is essential. Now the filmmaker kit we had before was a lot bigger than this. I don't have it with me now, I've, I've left it back in our home studio, but uh, uh, it was huge and it had uh, AA batteries in it. It was a great unit, but I find the Wireless Go does everything that that filmmaker kit did. But when you're traveling, look how tiny this is. I mean, it's insignificant really. It's a fantastic solution from Rode and we're really pleased with it. So I hope that explains to you. What I am gonna do now is I'm going to test these three microphones for you and explain to you hopefully what you're going to hear from them um, and why this microphone is often even better if you're doing sort of talking head videos like this. So let's give that a go. We're gonna switch over now to the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus on the DSLR camera. So we've unplugged the wireless go. We've now got the shotgun mic plugged in, the VideoMic Pro Plus, and you should be still getting really nice, crisp sound. We're only about a meter and a half away from me at the moment. It should be pretty crisp. The only thing I sometimes notice in a room environment like this uh, where you're not in a studio, I sometimes get a bit of reverb and a bit of echo from the room. It may not be as crisp and as clear as the little micro. I have got the lab on at the moment, but this is not recording. It is the Video Mic Pro Plus that's picking up the sound. So let's switch over now to the Rode Video Micro to see how that is. We have the Rode Video Micro on there now, and I'm talking a little bit louder because I'm not, I'm not gonna adjust my camera setup. I'll adjust the gain in post for this one, but I can't actually adjust it on the microphone. It has no facilities to do that. It also comes out of the box with a three ring jack. Now I know there's a proper name for these, but this one will go into your phone and work fine. It works when the phone jack is both a microphone and a headphone jack. So you know when you're using uh, the same jack here in your phone as you do for your headphones and your microphone, you need a three ring jack like this. But that won't work with most cameras. So we have to adjust, whoops, we have to actually take that off, the gray one, and use one of these black ones, the two rings. I'm talking in layman's terms because I hope you appreciate to me, this just makes more sense. So that's the sound from the video micro. Now quickly, 
whilst I've got the uh, the Sony action cam the FDRX 3000 here I'm going to test the Rode Wireless Go on its lowest decibel setting because the Sony is notoriously hot and just show you a comparison we are back on the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus at the moment on the main camera so over to this one the Sony and you can see I can actually use the Wireless Go with the Sony it's a little bit hot so quite often I have to adjust the sound a little bit but it works perfectly well I could not do this with the video micro it just would not work and I can show you an example of that now you see on the micro there is no gain adjustment at all it probably will not work with this Sony I think I've tested it before uh, you obviously need some mount to hold the microphone if I turn it to me now and I try talking it's going to be just too hot and whatever you do with it in post it's going to sound awful even if you compress the sound down it just sounds really awful where the video micro comes into its own is if you vlog on a phone this is a great simple microphone because it doesn't need any phantom power at all it will work without any batteries it's great just to take out and about you don't have to worry about charging it up it is perfect for the phone it is not the best microphone to use for all cameras uh, if you can't adjust the gain on it uh, you have to go into the settings on a lot of cameras to make this work it will work with the cameras by the way but you do have to go into the settings I do love this little microphone. I love the fact that it doesn't need any batteries and it just works out of the box. It's very good. But the Video Mic Pro Plus, it just it's just more professional as the name states. It has more functionality and it won't let you down. By the way, the battery, uh, the self-charging battery that's in this unit as well lasts for ages. I mean, you almost can treat it as a non-battery unit. It, it rarely runs out on me. Uh, it'll go for days and days, months even sometimes without a recharge. We're back on the wireless go now and I really love this microphone. You can be across uh, a bridge talking to camera, big wide shots. It's got perfect sound. If I'm using this little thing out and about, if I'm filming myself, Quite often I don't need any external mic source at all, but if there's any wind at all, there's nothing worse than getting home and you've lost all of your sound, your, all of your audio from wind. It doesn't matter even if you put a little furry cat on there, you still frequently lose your sound, which is, it's soul destroying when you get back and put it on the line to try and edit it. But it's not just the wind. If you go into a restaurant, for example, or a shopping center, a shopping mall, where the acoustics are terrible, and you try to film with your phone or your small camera or your, your GoPro, it quite often is just unusable. The acoustics in there are terrible. If you're in that situation, you really want the lab mic. You don't actually need to have the lavalier. You can go with the wireless go and just clip it to your shirt. Uh, you can clip it inside to the, the the bulk of this is inside your shirt and not showing or if you're not too bothered just sort of clip it onto your shirt this will pick up such better quality sound in a noisy environment like a restaurant or a shopping mall you really just can't work any other way some phones do pick up the sound very well when you're in restaurants and shopping centers and noisy places but a lav mic is always going to guarantee you get perfect sound you can also use a directional shotgun mic like this one in a shopping center but it's a it can be a little hit and miss and if you haven't got someone if you're like us you're just traveling you're a small youtuber and you haven't got someone to listen to the sound on headsets you know we don't have a big crew with us uh, you can't always be certain that you're going to get the best quality sound directional if you're pointing it at something and you want to get that sound perfect this is the microphone to go with. You can, of course, take your lav mic off and, and put it down near a sizzling pot of food just to, to get those cooking sounds. That is an option. Now, if I only had one microphone to choose to travel with, it would be a bit of a toss up for me between the Wireless Go and the Video Mic Pro Plus. 
but I think if I really had no choice at all, I'd travel with this little fella because it's pretty versatile. It works with almost every camera I have. I can even do my live streams on the phone with this and it works really well. We can also do interview situations. I've done uh, chats when I've had Michelle and I talking and I just lay this down in front of us. It picks up great audio. So wireless go for the win. Uh, Rode microphones, thank you very much for this, this great little product. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Uh, I don't always have time. I'm not a, a technical guy with sound. Um, we are just YouTubers who travel and we like to be able to collect the best sound we can get. So there you go, a little bit different today. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, share the love, thumbs up the video, share it with your friends and family and I will see you for some fun in the kitchen or on the road very shortly. Be good. So you've got salty, cheesy, it's really, really nice. Now I've got all the cinnamon there. Now I've seen some beautiful towel displays, but this is just superb. It's uh, stunning. <laughs>